So hello everyone. So, so the question that was asked to me was how to stretch a suspensory ligament. So let me try to create a hypothetical scenario over here. Like if I am a right-handed surgeon, I would stand in such a way that the umbilicus is towards the left. So towards the left is the head of the patient. Towards the right, I have the tail of the patient, and I'm trying to do a spay. Now imagine if I'm all scrubbed in, gloved in, okay, and. Uh, I'm uh, trying to reach to the uh, right ovary, which is considered deep, okay? So I have the ovary, I hold the bursa in my hand in such a way that the uterus, proper ligament, bursa and suspensory ligament comes in a straight line, okay? So I would hold the, bursa, the ovary in between my index finger and thumb, my ring finger and my other fingers will go through the broad ligament so that I have a secure grip which uh, it, it won't slip. Then we would add lignocaine over there in a septic way, make sure the anesthesia is stable. And then I would introduce one hand below the suspensory ligament, okay, now especially uh, the index finger. Then I would keep my thumb over the suspensory ligament and then I make sure that the caudal aspect or the rostral aspect of my finger points towards the tail of the patient, okay, so the direction is going to be like this. So I get a secure grip, the closer you are towards the kidney the better you will have you will have less chances of breaking the suspensory ligament and uh, less difficulty in stretching it if it is too difficult and then what you would do it slowly and steady what you would do is you will increase the traction okay over the ligament with your index finger your thumb is just behind the ligament so your thumb is not actually you're not pulling anything with your thumb you're just holding your thumb there in case for safety in case if the suspensory ligament breaks then your thumb would make sure that everything doesn't get ripped off. So the idea is we want to stretch the ligament and we don't want to break it. And when you hold the ovary at the highest point from the abdomen, then you know how much space you have. So we need enough space to make sure we put a clamp over there, artery forceps over there. You should be able to do a ligature below and one more ligature above it. There should be enough space for us to keep two forceps cut in between the ligature, cut in between the forceps over here, make sure uh, that we have enough space to check for bleeding, okay, and for some reason if something goes wrong, we should be in a position to go below our lowest ligature, so there has to be that space between the lower ligature and the kidney, for worst case scenario if something goes wrong, and all these calculations are depended on the placement of the first artery forceps that you keep over there. So stretching the ligament is an important part of doing a spay surgery. If you really want to do your space all by yourself, so you don't need two people being scrubbed in even for a most difficult spay. If you have a Kamal forceps that would help you to hold it without crushing it with just one click on the ratchet, you will need a competent anesthetist though. Okay, but I don't think you need two people to do a spay and that's what we have been teaching for uh, so many years. So I hope I have answered this question well. So the idea is to stretch the ligament and not break it. Okay, and try it. Remember that's the most painful part of the surgery and we have to make sure our patient is stable when you do that. Okay, thank you so much.